Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV channel, Power Life TV broadcast. We are restoring families with Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. And we're here to give you another great broadcast. It's Monday. Monday. Monday morning. Uh, we are here to uh, share some love, share some light. You know, one of the things that I found out during this fast is that I have more energy than I used to have. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know. It may be wearing you out a little bit, though. Is it? Is it gonna wear you out? Uh, I'm okay. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited about this week. Mm -hmm. Amen. We had a good week last week. We had a good Sunday service, and uh, I'm excited about getting into the Word, talking about the Kingdom family. Amen. Uh, now we have an assignment to teach on the kingdom, and and during these broadcasts, since we are restoring families, it is time for us to teach on kingdom families, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about the source, which is the Father. Right. And right. so um, I don't want to kind of belabor the points of where we were last week. Just go back and watch it. Uh, we're on Power Life TV channel. We're having, um, excuse me, uh, if you click on the like button or click on the on the uh, subscribe button or hit the uh, notification bell and you'll get all of our content amen. amen so we started off with proverbs chapter 4 mm -hmm. and verse 1 and we're talking about this is our foundation scripture if you will and we're talking about the family so you want to go ahead and read that hear my children the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding for i give you good doctrine do not forsake my law when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live, get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. So we're talking about getting wisdom today. And uh, this is uh, why we do what we do. We wanna give you the wisdom from on high. So go get your notepad, get a pen or Start taking notes on your iPad or on your iPhone, but you want to get a hold of this revelation that we're talking about today. Amen. And so uh, last week we talked about the blessing mm -hmm. and the source, mm -hmm. the Father being the source, and we know that that the foundation, uh, Psalms eleven and three. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So we know now that the foundation to the family is the is the man, mm -hmm. and that God is not expecting the man to be the roof, and God is not expecting the man to be the windows or the doors. God is expecting the man to be the foundation mm -hmm. that everything sits upon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, when we're dealing with the father, the father is called to bless. Right. And so if you would look at the word blessing again, uh, what does that word mean? To bless means to empower, to prosper, or gain wealth. Mm. I like the another thing about the blessing. The blessing is the empowerment for success. Mm. I like that. Yeah, and then you read something also that the word bless means happy. Right. Well, you see in the New Testament, the translation for bless is often happiness. Mm -hmm. And so I found out that to bless also means, or to, to bless another means that it's happiness produced by experiencing the favor of mm. God, or you could say the favor of the Father. Mm -hmm. So when, when you experience favor, mm -hmm. you're going to experience blessing. Yes. The blessing. Uh, so favor is equal to the blessing. Right. That's good. So I want to talk a little bit and just kind of just recap a little bit about what we said on Friday. And how Jesus, over in Mark chapter 10, verse 13, how Jesus blessed the children. Mm -hmm. Then they brought the little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But Jesus saw it. He was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom mm, of God. So good. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Yeah, so the blessing came from the touch. Mm -hmm. Jesus made sure that he grabbed those children. He gave them a, 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 
an assuring, uh, a confidence, mm -hmm. uh, let them know that they were cared for, mm -hmm. that they were loved. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how the power of touch last week, mm -hmm. how it can create a memory. Right. You know, uh, re I'm reminded of when my dad would give me a hug and then give me instruction at the same time, mm -hmm. how I can still remember those things. Yes. And you know, where it says that he blessed them, he also imparted words. Words to them. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So he gave them words of adoration, mm -hmm. words of acceptance, words of affirmation words to enable them now mm -hmm. to go to the next level and be successful and, yeah. be, and be successful so we, we cannot forget that you know that was a part of the of the blessing mm -hmm. is you know those at words of adoration mm -hmm. spoken over your child mm -hmm. and it's really prophesying too over their future yeah so when so when you do that you know it's like think about your children leaving the house you know sometimes you don't want to just tell them goodbye <laughs> you know, you might want to say, son, come here. Mm -hmm. Have an awesome day today. Mm -hmm. You know, go out and conquer the world. You mm -hmm. know, you're going to do well on that, on that quiz. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever our children say to us, uh, I have a final or we have, you know, you know, in, they're in college, yeah, in college right. uh, we always touch them mm -hmm. and say the memory of the upright is blessed. Right. Yes. You know, you'll remember all things. So it's not only just touching, it's also speaking good words and That's prophesying true. good words. That's true. So. Uh, today, I want to talk about, um, and you pulled up a good story, I want to talk about the woman at the well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how she was looking for the source. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and so uh, go ahead and share with us what you have. So, you know, I, I like to say it this way, that the most important issue relating to the father can be found in this story, mm -hmm. and it's the story of the, of the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a simple story about a woman who is hurting in her relationships. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she has an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people Good. out there who might be hurting in their relationships. Mm -hmm. And one encounter with Jesus could change it all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, th on some level, this woman was searching for a father. Yeah. You know, have you ever seen a young lady who you could look at and say, oh, she's not looking for a husband. She's looking for a father. Mm -hmm. Well, that's who she was. Mm -hmm. That's who the Samaritan woman was. But listen, she was looking not just for a father. She was looking for a source. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, we talked yeah. about the definition of source mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so she was that's looking good. for, listen to this someone who would meet her needs mm -hmm. now maybe mm. she didn't perceive that she had a need yeah mm -hmm. when we look at adam in the garden he mm -hmm. didn't perceive that he had a need but mm -hmm. god knew he he had a need yeah. he had a need something yeah. was missing in his life mm -hmm. and so uh some people wow. would say that she was looking for a good man and that a good man is hard to find but she wasn't just looking for a good man. She was looking for a great man. A great man. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. And... Uh, <laughs> That's good. But, you know, one thing that we have to understand about a woman's search, and we have a lot of single ladies in our church right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And when a woman's search for a man turns desperate... Wow. Mm. She will find herself settling oftentimes for the wrong man. Now, the, the, the whole setup of that story of the woman at the well, she would go at a time to the well when no one else would go. Mm -hmm. and, and we mentioned that yeah. later on yeah. as well. But, yeah, she would she would visit the well at a time that she thought that nobody else was there. Mm -hmm. She was so rejected. And that's what I was going to bring up, the, the rejection. And I, I don't want to get too deep into what, what we have on the notes, but when, when, you're, when you're constantly looking, you're constantly searching. Uh, you you need the blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, you need... And, and, and here's what I want to say to the men right now. And I, um, and I say this in all honesty and, and with a lot of passion. You know, treat your children in the way that they should go. Treat them, treat them right. Have the ministry of presence. Mm -hmm. So when your little girls grow up, they're not looking for a father. They're, right. not, they're not searching for a father. You know, be that presence that they need right. while they're growing up. Show them what they should expect. Exactly. Exactly. Be be the be the man that they need to 
that they need to be married to, you know, and and so we're not we're not telling you, you know, um, they they should marry their father. What this what we're saying is, be all that that child needs, you right. know, so that they don't search for something else like mm -hmm. this woman did. Right. Uh, so it says in John uh, four and five, you know, and this is how the story goes. So he Jesus came to the city of Samaria, which is named Sychar. Uh, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Mm. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Mm -hmm. So That's he, so the uh, a woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, "Give me a drink." For his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. Mm. Uh, the woman, then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Mm. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Mm. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, who it is, who says to you, Give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water the woman said to him sir you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep where then do you get that living water are you greater than our father jacob who gave us the well and drank it for himself as well as his sons and his livestock and jesus answered wow, and good. said to her whoever drinks of this water will thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Mm. But the water that I give him will become to him, listen to this, a fountain of water up. springing up into everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Then the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go to your husband and come and come here. And the woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you have said, you have said, you have well said, mm -hmm. I have no husband for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now wow. is wow. not your husband. Mm -hmm. Of that you spoke truly. You know, one of the things I, I caught in that story is that uh, the woman at the well was so rejected that she instantly started rejecting her answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have we gone through life and we've been rejected and, you know, you know, not accepted in certain circles or not accepted in certain things? You know, we have a lot of things going on now with our young people. They have these mental health issues and mm -hmm. I'm not belittling that. But the reason why a lot of young people are having mental health challenges is because they're not being accepted in certain circles. Right. They're being rejected, right. you know. And so when, when a person is rejected, they will begin to reject others. Mm hmm. But here's the thing, uh, you have to understand that when you are in the presence of your answer, mm -hmm. you know, don't reject it. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that you're in the presence of your answer? The answer is persistent. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, when, you know, when you and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. I, I, no, you're okay. <laughs> when you and I, when, when I first met you, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm persistent. You know, I'm going after her, you know, and but it, it took us going a whole year just getting to know each other. Right. You know, not saying that you were rejected. It's just to say that when a person really wants you when a person really desires to be around you, they will pursue you. Mm -hmm. You know, so here's the thing. How do you know you're in the midst of your answer? They will not give up. Right. They won't right. quit, you know, right. and you'll be able to discern those things. Mm hmm. I just want to share that because <laughs> okay. there's a blessing in the presence. There, there is, it really is. There's a blessing uh, in persistence, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a blessing in, in breaking that spirit of rejection off of people and off mm -hmm. of your children. Mm -hmm. Be there. Be present in their moment. Be present when they have things going on. Don't be so busy with work or with your friends or with your hobbies that you can't be present for your children. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this, you know, as you mentioned, no woman would ever go by the well by herself. 
for safety reasons, you mm -hmm. know, and also for social reasons. Mm -hmm. So she often, the women would gather early in the morning mm -hmm. before they thought that the men would come by the well. Wow. And uh, so she was a social outcast. We wow. find out from uh, this story, they mentioned what hour Jesus was at the well. Mm -hmm. And this was a time that strangers and, you know, journeymen would come through Samaria. So yeah. it was no time to be around the well. So she was looking for love. Well, <laughs> you know? she was, she had been divorced five times and was considered a five time loser. Wow. By, you know, herself and, and others in that ancient society. I think even in this current society, yeah. after about five times, people think, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. she's a rejected woman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. a rejected man. You know, she was considered an adulterer mm. Wow. in that day and age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no other woman wanted to be associated with her, you know. She also visited the well during the hottest part of the day when she would not run into other citizens of the town and yet Jesus was waiting there for her. Mm, mm. Don't you find that interesting? So in the hottest part of your life, that's where Jesus is. Mm -hmm. You know, in the... Uh, what do you mean by the hottest part of your life? Because see, I'm, I'm reading that. Mm -hmm. She was visiting the well during the hottest part of the day when mm -hmm. she would not run into other citizens. Mm -hmm. I think about the, the three Hebrew boys. Mm. The three Hebrew boys was going through a hot time in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they were going through a time where uh, they had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, and whenever you make the right decision, mm -hmm. even though things are hot, mm -hmm. even though situations are bad, when you make the right decision, Jesus will always meet you at your point of decision. Right. And that's what I see in that. I see mm -hmm. that, you know, God, God never for, for, forgets about us. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I read when you said, or I heard when you said, Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. Right. I must go through Samaria. Right. I must go to the outcast. Right. I must go through the rejected. I must go to, to, to the ones that, that are forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the, that's the heart of a source. Mm -hmm. That's the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. To go to those that other people have thrown away. Mm hmm I see this. This is so good. You, when you, bless you, bless you, bless you, <coughs> bless you. <laughs> we got it all out. I had to work for that. Steve. Yeah, I know. It's because I was in your presence. <laughs> yeah, but you, you see what I'm saying? Though how Jesus is always there during the rough times of our lives. Right. And, you know, I always heard things like it's always darkest before dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it just means that the bigger the crisis, the more likely that Jesus is about to show up in your life in a, in a great way. The bigger the crisis, the bigger your Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you know, the Jews and the Sumerians, they had issues. They didn't get along, mm -hmm. you know. And when you look at the history of the Samaritan and the Jew, you find that they had different religious ideologies. Mm. They had racist views wow. and stereotypes of each other, not to mention the gender inequalities that they had. You know, um, women were considered not as valuable as a man, for instance, and subject, you know, to the uh, rules of her husband, in fact, women and children were considered slaves mm. in the ancient societies. Wow. So, you know, needless to say, this woman was very broken and she needed to be made whole. So yeah. the most important key in any relationship is who is your daddy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. So who is your father or who could you trust in a crisis? Who is the That's one good. you go to? What is the source? that you turn to mm -hmm. when things are rough in your life or when you're in the hottest part of your day mm -hmm. or your week mm -hmm. or your month yeah. or your year. Mm -hmm. Who do you turn to in a crisis? That's good. Yeah. You know, so, you know, who is your source? Who meets your deepest need? Mm -hmm. And we often feel like we're keeping, we're uh, like we have to keep choosing uh, the wrong kind of man or woman in our life because we need a temporary fix for mm -hmm. our broken situations, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, when you when we're talking about here the power of the blessing, this is uh, this is very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now we see that 
you can make a mistake after mistake after mistake. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't allow the mistake to to keep you in the mistake. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Exactly. It should cause you to make a choice now. Mm -hmm. Who do I run to? Who do I run to? Yeah, who's been there for me? Yeah. yeah who's um, who's always there for me? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a song uh, about Fred Hammond that I like, and he said, uh, Abba Father, it's called Abba Father. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, who was there when I first opened up my eyes? Mm -hmm. Who was there when I, you know, uh, began to cry? You know, mm -hmm. who was there when I had my first ball game? Who never missed the game? Right. It was my father. Yeah, and a lot of people are looking for their natural father to meet the needs yeah. that their only their spiritual father can really meet. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a horrible position to be in, expecting a person mm -hmm. to meet the needs that your heavenly father, even though your natural father is designed to model the behavior of your heavenly father. Yeah. Not yeah. all men yeah. are aware. Mm -hmm. Not all men are subject or are submitted to the Father in heaven. And mm -hmm. so what do you do when you when those needs go unmet, when you want someone to show up for that game and mm -hmm. you think, you know, I need a father who will never leave me, mm -hmm. who will never forsake me. Well you need Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. You need Jesus. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He never missed a game. Every time you opened your eyes, he was right there. Every time you closed them, yeah. he watched you while you slept. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know? Yeah. So uh, Jesus never addressed uh, the type of uh, man that the Samaritan woman had in her life. You mm, notice that? That's good. He never talked to her about the type of man she had married. Mm -hmm. she that's good. He never talked to her about her past husbands. Mm. He never talked to her about the the past things that she depended on to be her source. He addressed the well that she was currently drinking from to meet her needs. Mm. I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. And so he let her know that as long as she trusted in the wrong source, as long as she trusted in the wrong well mm -hmm. to meet her needs, she would that she would her. always find yeah. herself Thirsty. In need mm. of a source to build her life upon. Mm -hmm. That is so good, mm. and I'm, I'm I'm just listening and I'm thinking there's a lot of thirsty, you know, children, thirsty women, you know, mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. going to the wrong source. Always going to the wrong source, yeah. trying to get their needs met. When when Jesus said, "I am the way, the well, yeah, uh, I'm yeah, the well." Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So he was saying to her that there were two types of wells in her life. Mm -hmm. That there was a natural well that will leave you thirsty and spiritually, uh, you know. Yeah, a spiritual well. And, yeah. and then there was, uh, that will leave you thirsty. And then there was a spiritual well that will constantly fill your life with good things mm -hmm. and everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about this is when it comes to love and marriage, God never designed Adam and Eve to function successfully in life without Jesus. Yes, that's so good. That's it. Without that everlasting well, without that ever flowing fountain, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were designed to fail mm -hmm. when they detached from the well mm -hmm. of everlasting of life. life. Yeah. You know, uh, our time is up, but we have to make that point again. As long as you get pulled out of that source, mm -hmm. As long as you're separated from the source, you will be separated from life itself. Yeah. You know, we look at the fish. When you pull a fish out of water, it doesn't die immediately. No, it doesn't. It, it flops. <laughs> it, it does a lot of flopping. You know, sometimes I went, when I would go fishing, I would hate that part. You know, especially when I was young. I don't, right. don't want to mess with the flopping fish. You handle it, Daddy. Can you pull the yeah. fish out of his mouth, please? <laughs> But it's starving. It's thirsty. It's it's needing sustenance. It's needing life because it's dying. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it stays out of that water long enough, mm -hmm. it will eventually die. It will. Uh, you pull a plant out of the out of the ground. It still may have a lot of buds, and it may continue to bud for a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but you leave it out long enough, you pull a what did I say? Plant out of the ground. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will eventually. Um, it will eventually die. Mm -hmm. So mankind has been existing without Jesus for over 2,000 years. And then, and you know, as long as you don't attach to your source, you're just existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're looking for the hole to be filled that mm -hmm. only Jesus can fill in love, mm -hmm. 
with the wrong person or an alcohol or in your children. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people replace their need for Jesus with their children. That's so true. You know, your children are not that well. Mm. Your that husband is not that well. Right. You know, that dog or that that uh whatever you got going on in your life that you're have your total dependence on. That's not that well. You need to be like the Samaritan woman who finally had an encounter with Jesus and yes. let the well of life give you everything that you ever needed. So I want to make four points so that we can go into tomorrow's uh, uh, broadcast where we talk about how the Father is designed to meet all of our deep relationship needs. That's so good. So the four things, number one, God is the real source of your happy marriage and family mm -hmm. he is the will mm -hmm. that will not run dry that's and good. he's the only thing that's going to meet that need uh that spiritual hold that you have on the inside of you number two that's you good. cannot so succeed good. in marriage and family without jesus mm -hmm. sorry you just can't do it mm -hmm. uh, just like adam and eve needed god you know in that garden to be successful yeah. you need jesus number three god intended to be the center of all human relationships. Mm -hmm. In other mm -hmm. words, if he is not the center of it all, if you make your job the center, if you make you know your hobby the center, if you make, yourself make, yourself. Make, make yourself the center, anything that you put in the center is destined to fail. Mm -hmm. You know? That's good. And so um, the only thing that's intended to be the center of all human relationships is God himself. Mm -hmm. And number three, all human relationships were originally designed to succeed that's good that's good so we're going to stop right there i pray that you receive this word this was a good one and you know maybe you say well pastor i kind of identify with some of those things what do i do well all you have to do is just come to jesus mm -hmm. he's here he's your source you know and you know a lot of people say well i found god well no you didn't mm -hmm. god is not lost a lot of times we get lost in our situations <laughs> and god is looking for you but he's not hard He's not hard to, to be found. I'm telling you right now, if you are just, if you just turn, God is right there. Right. He will meet you at your hottest hour. He will meet you at your place of desperation. He will meet you at your place of rejection. Yeah. He is always there. He'll never leave you in Hebrews. And never forsake you. And never forsake you. Amen. So we want you to, uh, to just continue on sowing into these messages because I'm telling you, it is changing. It is changing lives. Mm -hmm. And and people are being blessed by it. Uh, listen, we're always out. We're always about and we're always talking to people. Always having some um, conversation with people. Mm -hmm. And I found out uh, even last night that there was a um, a person that I was sitting next to and they was just drawn to the influence that was on our lives. Mm -hmm. And they all they could do was want to talk about the things of God. You know? <laughs> But that's that's the thing. When you when you sow into this anointing, the same anointing that's on us mm -hmm. will come off on you. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank you for your partnership. Thank you for those that have uh, that making a decision to sow. You have a, a QR code on your screen, or you can give to wordpowerchurch.com. Click on the donate tab. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's bless the people. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We declare shalom and blessings over your life. And we declare that Jesus is Lord and he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. And we'll see you next time. Amen. Amen.